But I want to move on now to two-way ANOVA. And as you've probably guessed, we're now, rather than having one grouping in the model, we're going to think about models that have got two groupings. And this example would be one where a two-way ANOVA was suitable. So the experiment was done. There were two strains of mice which have these C3H and CD1. So these are two genetic strains of mice. The overall objective of the experiment was to see if this active injection called chlorum, how it affected their red blood cell count. Half the mice had were controls, so they had a sham injection, and half of them had this active injection, chlorum, and their red blood cell count was measured after having the injections. So there were four mice who, in each of the groups for each strain, so 16 mice altogether. So how might we might use an ANOVA to investigate this? Well, instead of just having one effect in, in the model, we can now look at the effects of both strain and injection. And this is sort of expressing the model in a non-mathematical notation where you have the thing you're analysing on the left and you say it's equal to the factors that you want to put into the model on the right. This model is going to assess both the effect of strain and injection in the same model. This is the output, I think, that was from Minitab. So whereas we just had one row that we were interested in before, we've now got two rows that give us a significance test to compare the strains and the second one to give us a significance test p-value to compare the different injections. So we find there's a significant difference between the strains of mice in red blood cell count, but you know, that might not be particularly interesting to us. We're not really studying that. We're studying the effect of the injection. So this p-value says, well, that wasn't, wasn't significant. So we haven't been able to prove overall that there was an injection effect, but that's across both strains of mice. So that's basically what two-way analysis of variance is. Um, there are two factors that are of interest in the same set of data, and you can address them both at once in the same analysis of variance model. Uh, I showed a table like this last time. You, there is an option in Minitab which will allow you to see which strains are different. In this case, of course, there are only two <coughs> strains and we showed that they were different, so that, that if you had three or more, you'd want to see which strains were different. So, of course, we found they were significantly different and they've got a different letter here, which, as the note underneath says, means that do not share a letter are significantly different. So we've been able to show the strains are different. Another question you might want to ask, you perhaps already thought this in this study, is, well, the injection effect wasn't significant overall, but perhaps for individuals, was, is that the case for both strains? Perhaps it was having an effect in one strain of mice, but not in the other strain. So um, we can address this using something called an interaction. You specify that in the software. Um, usually using a star or a, a dot, so you put in this term known as an interaction, and that's the term that's going to assess the hypothesis that the effect of the injection was the same for both the, the strains of mice. So we get out an analysis of variance table looking something like this, and the main difference is we've now got a third row added in to address that interaction, and we find a significant p-value. This p-value is less than 0.05, so this has shown us that um, the injection does have a significantly different effect on the two strains of mice. 
So that's actually a very interesting finding for this study. Although on average over the two strains the um, injection effect wasn't significant, we are finding that we've got enough evidence to say that the effect size was different between the, the two strains of mice and we'll want to go on and find out which strain there was a bigger difference for and whether that was actually significant. In Minitab we get this output net. This is for the interaction. It's going to tell us for you know, each of the four groups of the data. So the CD1 strain who had chlorum compared to the control group for that strain, both had this letter A. So that says there's not a significant difference between the effect of the injection for that strain of mice. But for the second strain, C3H, if we look at the control row and the chlorum row, we get an A and a B. So that means there's a significant difference depending on the injection type for that strain of mouse. This has been quite an interesting way to study this. You've managed to study two, two strains at once and establish that this injection is different. The effect of the injection is different between the strains. It only seems to be having an effect in one strain. And that's only possible really to address using an analysis of variance model that um, fits the interaction. Of course, you could just take the data for each strain separately, but that hasn't actually proved the interaction. It hasn't proved that there's a significant difference in the effect between the strains. You can only do that with analysis of variance. So we might want to know, well, what, what are the p-values? Um, it said, you know, that table we had just now said there is a significant difference, the letters are different, but um, we'd like to know what the p-value was for that test. And usually in packages, there's some kind of option that will allow you to guess at that. I think the Minitab um, output that you get from using the appropriate option is particularly unfriendly, but it does have the information in that you want. You have to sort of read this table quite carefully, work out what it's looking at. It's looking at here, the C3H strain on the mice that had injecting the active injection and then comparing it to the four other groups. And the one we're interested in, of course, is the control group for that, for that strain. We don't want to compare it to the, the groups for the other strain. So I've highlighted that and that's where we've got the significant effect. So we knew it was significant, but now we know what the p-value is, um, 0.02. So not highly significant but it's definitely significant which given this is a small study it was quite good to find that and of course what we also want is to get the p-value for the other strain and we need to go down to this table where that strain on chlorum is compared to the same strain cd1 on control and we get a non significant p-value, so there's no evidence at all that the injection is having an effect in that strain of mouse. So it's been quite an informative study, but we did need analysis of variance to draw the full conclusions from it.